Hello, and welcome to Radiology for Acute Care Nurse Practitioners, Part 2, Identifying Emergencies. My name is Ruth Ann Skinner, and I'm an Acute Care Nurse Practitioner at Grand Canyon University. This is the second half of the broadcast called Introduction to Radiology for Acute Care Nurse Practitioners. For radiology basics, line verification, and plain film identification, please see Part 1. Let's proceed with identifying emergencies. Please be aware that this is not an exhaustive list, but it is a good start to common problems seen on imaging. As nurse practitioners, utilize the radiology reports whenever possible. However, you should be able to identify emergencies. This patient has a large volume of free gas under the diaphragm. Dark crescents have forms separating the thin diaphragm from the liver on the right and the bowel on the left. This patient had a perforated duodenal ulcer. A pneumothorax can be often difficult to see. The classic appearance is of a pencil-thin line which represents the lung's edge. You can see the thin pencil line here, but the heart has shifted which indicates there is tension with this pneumothorax. This patient needs a chest tube very quickly. Pneumomediastinum is the presence of extra lumen gas within the mediastinum. Gas may originate from the lungs, trachea, central bronchi, esophagus, and tract from the mediastinum to the neck or abdomen, and commonly occurs from trauma. Among other indications, notice the presence of the ring around the artery sign. The infiltrates around the heart can sometimes mimic an enlarged heart, but look for opacities to include a pericardial effusion diagnosis. This is called the water bottle sign. The water bottle sign refers to the shape of the cardiac silhouette on a rect frontal chest x-ray in a patient who has a very large pericardial effusion. Typically, the effusion has accumulated over many weeks to months and the pericardium has gradually stretched. The fluid, often measuring a liter or more, causes the pericardium to sag, mimicking an old-fashioned water bottle now sitting on a bench. A thoracic aortic aneurysm is an aortic aneurysm that presents primarily in the thorax. A thoracic aortic aneurysm is the ballooning of the upper aspect of the aorta above the diaphragm, untreated or unrecognized, they can be fatal due to the dissection or the popping of the aneurysm, leading to nearly instant death. Thoracic aneurysms are less common than the abdominal aortic aneurysm. When ruling out neurological emergencies, CTs of the head are necessary. This patient presented to the ER with altered mental status. The hyperdense outline indicates new blood on the subdural hematoma. The hypodensity indicates old blood in this chronic subdural hematoma. A chronic subdural hematoma mimics the look of a subdural hygroma, which is actually a collection of sub um, CSF. In a subdural space, we see a variety of densities here. As discussed, the different densities indicate time differences and ages of the subdural hematoma. The brain is amazing and will develop membranes to try to protect itself. Membranes typically will separate the blood. The hyperdensity here occurs in this convex image in the epidural space. There is usually tearing of the meningeal arteries in an epidural bleed, which can cause it to bleed quickly. The condition is potentially deadly because of the buildup may cause increased cranial pressure, which, which compromises delicate brain tissue and can cause a shift. There are two types of subarachnoid hemorrhages, traumatic and aneurysm. The hyperdensity around the circle of wills is easily recognizable here. This is a neurosurgical emergency. For aneurysms, that cause a subarachnoid hemorrhage, act quickly so the aneurysm can be coiled or clipped depending on the provider, age of the patient, and severity. 
Thank you for listening to this quick summary of evaluation of emergencies on imaging. Here are some great educational websites to continue your learning journey.